Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to our ongoing Game Engines by Programming Language Guide. Today, we are revisiting the Rust programming language. Well, we've already done C++, TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, Lua, uh, C Sharp should be out any day now, and now we are going to do Rust. So if you're looking for a specific game engine to go along with a specific programming language, this should be perfect for you. And the first one we've got here is probably the most popular game engine in the world of Rust, and that would be Bevy. Now, Bevy is uh, data-driven, uh, very full-functioning in capability, except the lack of an editor. An editor is definitely something that is being worked on with Bevy, uh, but Bevy is, again, probably the most popular uh, game engine in the world of Rust game engines. By the way, it was inspired by a game engine called Amistist, which is not going to make the list today because it just hasn't been updated in a couple of years now. And it hasn't been updated in at least a year. It's not on this list. So everything here should be pretty Pretty active in terms of development. By the way, I said that Bevy does not have an editor. Well, there are projects out there to try and fix that. One such project that is actively being developed is Space Editor. This is the Bevy Prefab Editor. So it's for uh, a tool for prefabs, prototyping, and so on with the Bevy engine. There is an official project with Bevy to create an editor as well, but this is an option that is out there if you are interested. Now, another option if you want a full-blown editing experience, but you want to use Rust as your game programming language is Fire. Now, Firefox used to be called the Rage Engine. Uh, if the Bevy engine isn't the biggest game engine in the Rust world, then Firefox takes that crown. Although I do think Bevy has, you know, more stars, more contributors, that kind of thing. But this one is the closest you're going to find to a Unity type out of the box complete turnkey solution when it comes to using the Rust programming language. It's also free and open source. I think everything today is going to be free and open source, by the way. Another one we have is Piston. This is a modular game engine written in Rust. You can see an example of the code over here. Uh, this one's been around, started back in 2014. 14. I do think it's been a little bit since it was updated. It's definitely been updated within a year, but this one is kind of maybe won't be on it the next time I do this list. So uh, you can see kind of titles that have been created using it. Again, entirely open source project there as well. You can develop 2D, 3D, and immediately UI, immediate UI projects here. Uh, and then another one we have is the Blue Engine. It's a general purpose, easy to use, extendable and portable graphics engine written in Rust. So not technically a game engine. This is more about doing uh, the rendering abstraction between your world and the Vulkan, Direct3D, OpenGL, ES, and Metal backends across a variety of platforms. So if you need to have, or you're building your own engine and you're looking for a cross-platform technology that abstracts away the graphics layer, uh, that is where Blue Engine might kick in for you. Uh, written 97.8% in Rust, by the way, and then 2% in, or 0.2% in just. Uh, then we've got Notam. Same kind of concept, but this is more like um, SDL-ish level. Uh, so it's simple portable layer designed to make your own multimedia apps. Uh, this seems to be a little bit more, more focused on the 2D side of things. I mean, an idea, um, rendering triangles. So again, obviously it does 3D as well, but it is another abstraction layer. Uh, and here are the supported platforms. So web browsers, OpenGL on various different platforms. So definitely not as many platforms as what you'd see with Blue Engine or rendering backends, I'd say. Uh, but another option out there if you want to uh, build something on top of something else, uh, Notan might be a good choice for you. And this one is interesting. I actually did a video about it probably two years ago at this point in time now. Uh, it is a game engine designed to build your games collaboratively. It's powered by Rust, Wasm, and WebGPU. So you go online, your community comes in, and you can basically develop your game together. Their website is also a site. So if you're interested in learning more, that is the Ambient platform. I'm not sure how much things are going here. It's a very unique experience, one worth checking out, but again, very different from pretty much everything else we were talking about today. Now, another one we've got, and this one is a uh, Rust game engine for 2D pixel art games, all about you doing that pixel art as accurate as possible. And I have no idea how to say it because it is Chuot. I don't know what an omelet and a dot do to pronunciation, but I'll call it Chuot. Uh, so this is all about pixel perfect art rendering. Uh, it does rotations so of your sprites. It handles things like Windows creation and your render game loop and so on. It does handle things like game pads and so on. So you can think of this one a little bit like love with a focus on 2D pixel art. So you see an idea of uh, the rotation effect options that are available, the scaling and so on. So if you're trying to get that um, perfect recrea uh, recreation of pixel art style, uh, Chuat might be the right choice for you. And it might be spelt completely different, one of those things to be aware of. Uh, but 
This is, again, also opinionated. That means it's making a lot of the decisions for you. It should make your life easier on the other end. We have another one here. This, I believe, also builds itself as opinionated. And interestingly enough, I said the last one kind of love-like. Well, this one is very much uh, based on a rustified version of the love framework. So this is GG Easy. Uh, so this is good games easily. Uh, it's the idea behind it. Uh, and it's just all about making games make making it easy to make games if you ever work with love you know exactly what kind of approach they are taking here um so there's uh other there's these are things that it doesn't do by the way so you know you're, you're still having to to create all these things yourself it works on windows linux mac os and again it aims to be as easy to work with so you can see a sample game here using a variety of different callbacks event handling and so on for for all your process so that's ggez this is probably the most robust 2d framework or 2d only framework out there in terms of uh community size and so on uh and then we have this one is technically an extension a gd extension for uh the godot game engine and this adds rust language support to Godot via GD extension. There's also a uh, an earlier version of it for Godot 3, the GD native version, but now they've moved on to GD extensions, which should get better performance, better integration, and better maintenance going forward. So if you want to work with the Godot game engine, but you want to use the Rust programming language, Godot, Godot Rust is an option. I covered this like two or three years ago, and it was pretty close to production ready then. So I think it's improved since. And now we got another one, uh, kind of like what we just saw earlier on uh, that was inspired by Love. Well, this one is inspired by Raylib. And I'm a big fan of Raylib. It's a cross-platform, easy to use C library for creating games. Um, MicroQuad is basically a Rust uh, inspired by, but not bindings for Raylib. So should make it very simple to make your code. So you can see the direct kind of line by line coding style you've got to create a simple 2D game using macro quad. And again, this is inspired by Raylib. And you can also see here, it, it should be quick, minimal dependencies, quick build times, and so on. So if you want to create a 2D game, uh, macro quad is an option. However, if you're all about Raylib, there are Raylib bindings. Now we're getting into the binding section of this video. And if you've watched my previous language videos, you're going to notice there's uh, the usual suspects are all here. One of them is Raylib. Now Raylib has bindings for 60 different programming languages. So the fact that it has Rust bindings are not a shock at all. So if you want to use the, um, you can see an example again of Raylib in action using the bindings. Um, this is an option. Uh, I think it is pretty popular too. So it is, is getting constant updates 13 hours ago at this point in time. Uh, but not a lot of contributors here. So uh, this is the Raylib bindings, and then we've got bindings for SDL. And we've actually got two sets of bindings for SDL, SDL being the simple direct media layer. This is something that handles uh, the window creation, drawing on screen, input handling, all that kind of stuff. It's actually used by Valve for all the Source Engine games. It's used by tons of games, to be honest, but there are two iterations of it out there. One of them is Rust SDL2, and I know the astute among you can probably guess this one, but the other one is for Rust SDL3. Yeah, so there's bindings for both SDL2 and SDL3. SDL3 was just released about four months back, five months back. So nice to see them up to date. Uh, they do still need to add some of the new features from SDL3 and update the documentation. Just one of those things to be aware of. SDL3 is pretty new. So there's a reason why people are still sticking around with SDL2, but it's nice to see there are libraries for both in the works. Uh, and then we have bindings for SFML. SFML is very similar to SDL. SDL is a C library. SFML is a C++ library. And Rust SFML is for it. I don't know if they're up to Rust 3, which also was recently released. Uh, not 100% certain yet. Also looks like if you're in Mac land, uh, it may be a, a little bit uh, iffy going. It actually looks like if you're in anything but Linux, uh, this might be a little bit iffy. Just one of those things to be aware of. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is at least the, the top Rust game engine still under active development that I found. Now, no doubt there are more. So if I missed one, please do let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you think of this uh, list of game engines for Rust. Uh, also, I'm pretty close to done this series now with the C-sharp release. I think I'll be pretty much done unless I do a new code version. So if there is a programming language out there that has sufficient game engines available for it that I should cover it, do let me know, but I'm not thinking of too many left that I haven't covered yet. But if there is more, do let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.